Hello, friends. Uh, it is Pastor Chris uh, here on Tuesday for our uh, time of encouragement, our time of prayer, our time of scripture. So I'm excited to just share uh, what's going on in my life and what's going on uh, in my own thoughts and prayers even this morning. I just want to share uh, with you all uh, some scripture and, and then to pray uh, with you. You know, it's Tuesday um, and it's the middle of the week. Uh, and I think to be honest with you, um, I had such a peaceful weekend um, and so grateful for the weekend and grateful for Sunday and worship with you all and all of that greatness. And, um, and then even uh, Monday and, and yet today I've just been feeling a little tired. And feeling a little, like, I feel like I've been going strong at 100 kind of miles per hour and loving it and loving connecting with you all and all the things that we're doing on Facebook and other things. But but this morning, I just sense a little bit of tiredness in my soul. And um, and, and yet what I, what I love about, even in this moment of feeling tired, is that um, God is so gracious um, and that there is a sense that uh, we, um, that God is so present and, and it's okay um, to acknowledge um, our own sense um, of tiredness. And, and I, what I kind of was led to uh, in, my, in my Bible uh, today was just to share from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. Um, and here's, here's what the text says. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for that is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit do not despise the word of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for and the part of the scripture that uh, I wanted just to share was the, the rejoicing always, the praying without ceasing. And some scriptures say, pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Christ Jesus. And I was thinking about, um, and I would love to even hear from, from you, Susanna, from others, of how, how can we do this, right? So if, if we hear scripture that says that we're to rejoice continually, if we're to pray without ceasing, um, how are we able to truly do that? Like, how? Um, and maybe it's like you, at least for me in this moment, um, I feel like I'm good. I feel like I have a sense of, uh, of peace. I have this deep of centeredness in God and with you all. But there's still a sense, I think, within me. It's like, can I rejoice uh, in this season? And, and can I um, give thanks in all circumstances and give thanks in this moment that, that God is still with us? and is still present uh, with us. And, and I'm kind of wrestling through that and, and would love to hear, but but I think for me, why I kind of would love to kind of share in this time of, of prayer with you all is simply just um, that I'm convicted that part of what I want to share today is that um, I think we're trying to live this out, actually. And I think you are, and, and I'm trying to as well. Um, and it's one of my favorite scripture passages, and I think that this is kind of a model for us that in the midst of this is, is maybe kind of a question like how are we to respond to all of this and the ongoingness and it's like this is never going to end and it seems like it's going to keep going for a long time. But how can we kind of live within this? And maybe a sense is how do we rejoice, have joy, celebration maybe, or to give thanks in this moment and to pray uh, without ceasing. And, and I think I want to share that this Sunday, uh, you're all going to start hearing about this and some posts on social media and and even in my weekly email, that this Sunday is the journey's one year anniversary, one year birthday, one year celebration. And, and I am so excited. And, and I want to, I'm going to talk about even in my sermon about how do we rejoice and celebrate the work of God here in this church, but also how do we still have a sense of celebration when it seems that the world and, and all of its complexity wants to kind of hold that from us and wants to hold it back. And how do we still have a sense of joy? I'm so excited because I actually believe that that we can still have a sense of joy and celebration uh, and, and that we can pray continually and to give thanks in all circumstances in the midst um, of the circumstances uh, that we're going uh, through right now. And, and I would love to know, do you believe that? Like, how, I would, maybe the question for you today is, 
how, how, how can we, uh, and I'm going to write that down, how can we uh, rejoice always uh, in the midst of this season? Um, yeah, David, I, I love your comments. Uh, when I think of rejoicing always, I think about keeping the right perspective. I tell my kids all the time not to focus on what you don't have, but focus on the good things you do. And I think that's so good, right? Um, I think that's so uh, true. Thanks for sharing that. And I think it's a good word. It's about perspective. It's maybe it's even the things that we're thinking about and the things that we don't think about, right? Um, that I think we could all dwell in the things that we don't have. And that was might feel long, and we might become depressed and sad and because. But how do we have this real sense of uh, that in the midst of it, what do we have, do have? Um, and if, even at our dinner table last night, Hannah and I were talking about just continually praying for life and thankful that we have life in this moment uh, and thinking about uh, family members and people who have lost loved ones, maybe through COVID, uh, but also through other tragedies or accidents right now. And, and this sense around kind of keeping perspective about needing to rejoice in the midst of the season, but praying without season, but to give thanks in all circumstances. And, and maybe um, the giving thanks isn't merely this like, I am so thankful that this happened, but maybe it's the being thankful for the things that we do have still. Uh, and to give thanks in the midst of, in the midst of all of this that we, we aren't alone. So for you all, what would you say? How, how can we rejoice always uh, in the midst um, of the season? We'd love to hear uh, from you. And, and then we'll just spend some time praying today. Um, I just feel led and compelled to pray for us uh, maybe praying for our emotional state, praying for the tiredness of people. Um, it was one thing to endure this for a couple of weeks. It's another to endure it for seven or eight weeks. Uh, and just wanting to be in this with you. Um, and just really grateful uh, that you um, are here uh, joining uh, with me today. God, I thank you. I thank you that in the midst of this season that that you are still leading us to have patient hearts, that you're still leading us to have hearts that can rejoice and to see the goodness um, in the midst of the season and not just to focus on the negative. And so God, right now, I just, right now, maybe wherever we are, I invite us to rejoice in the good things, rejoice in the blessings, to rejoice in the things that we haven't lost, even when it feels like we have lost it all. So God, right now we pray for those things. We pray that we have technology and that the, that we are still a church. We're still the people of you, God. That we still um, have our families and that we still, for some of us, have our work and that we still um, have a sense of connection even in the midst of isolation. And so God, thank you that there's still a silver lining in the midst of this. And so God, thank you um, for you and thank you for the way that we can rejoice. And God, I just pray that you actually give us a heart of rejoicing that you actually work within our minds, work within our hearts, that we can kind of begin to turn our maybe saddened hearts uh, into hearts of, of rejoicing and peace and, and maybe in the hearts of thankfulness in the midst of all circumstances. I think part of how we can do this, God, is that we have you, that we can still celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. But God, I right now think of people who are tired. I think of people who are weary, God, you know, there are people in my life who have endured such tragedy recently as this weekend. And God, I think about people who are hurting. But right now, it, it's really hard to rejoice. It's really hard to give thanks. But God, I'm thankful that you, as being shared in the comment, that you are unchanging. God, that, that you are present in the midst of darkness that you are present in the midst of uncertainty, that you actually can teach us to give thanks in the midst of it. And you, God, know that you ask us not from a distant evil God who is maliciously from heaven thinking and looking down upon us and wanting to test us. That's not what you're asking, but God, you are inviting us to rejoice and to give thanks from a God who is near, a God who is present, a God who is with us. Emmanuel, God being with us. God, I thank you that um, you are doing a new thing in our life, that God, you are, you are continuing to teach us and show us and give us sense of joy and excitement. God, I thank you that you, when you call us to pray without ceasing, God, you ask us just to be in continual dialogue with you and just to share every waking moment and feeling 
that we're experiencing and that, God, you are there. And so, God, I just thank you for that. And, God, I pray that you help us even consider today how can we rejoice always in the midst of this season. Thank you for that. And, God, I just wait for a moment and for us to continue to lift up things that come to our mind and that we are praying people and that we are patient people who are leaning into your spirit. You know, something I'm really grateful for uh, that I've shared a little bit about is that uh, there are people that I know who are leaning into faith right now for the very first time or who are leaning into church and faith in a renewed time. Uh, And that really encourages me um, that in this moment, that there are people who are really leaning into um, of God in this moment. And I just want to celebrate that and celebrate that that people are coming to know Jesus. Angel, thank you for your words. Pray that the darkness expressed by others does not dim the light within ourselves. Amen, right? Help us to continue to see our light and the light in others, living with a heart and attitude of attitude. I really appreciate that word, Angel, because I can think about that there are other people who can kind of get in the way of our joy. Is that right? right? Can I get an amen to that, right? There are other people, and maybe even how they're responding can can impact us and affect us, but that's so right. I think maybe for us to rejoice always and to give thanks in all circumstances is for us to claim within ourself God's presence within our life, that even people can respond, right? There's We have a sense of freedom uh, and a sense of um, uh, uh, autonomy and agency, but that we um, can have a sense of, of steadiness and a sense of joy uh, and a sense of light, even in the midst of darkness. That other people are experiencing darkness, and that's so true. Amen to that. Uh, but what, why we say amen to that is that people are experiencing darkness, but we know that God is there, and because we got, know that God is in, within our own light as well. Um, and so we celebrate um, that. But I pray that you all are well. Um, and if you need anything, um, I feel free. I invite you to um, share uh, with us. Know that you all are loved, um, cared for. We're rooting for you. Uh, I'm really grateful um, to be uh, one of your pastors and to be a pastor uh, in the midst of this season. So, um, and I just want to end in, in this way. God, I pray that you make yourself known to us. That in the midst of our frustration and pain and agony, when it feels like you are so distant, that we cling, God, that you are there and that you are here. And God, I pray for protection and healing for all who are on and who all hear my voice and all who will in the future, that they are cared for and comforted and kept healthy. Miracles are made known in the midst of the season. God, I thank you for those who have lost jobs, that they are given away. I ask for your protection and presence to lift up Wendy's husband and others who have lost jobs in the season. Again, we pray knowing that God hears the prayers of the righteous and hears the prayers of those whom God loves and who love God. And so I believe that's us. Uh, and so I'm praying for that. So friends, may you be loved and encouraged and thought of this day. Love you all. Talk to you soon.